Welcome to Show Money, the only show exclusively dedicated to the business of mixed martial arts. As always, we've got Jason Cruz, our lawyer, John Nash, the man who knows everyone and everything in MMA, and I'm Paul Giff, the uh, economist. Today, we were we were a little bit behind in our last show. That got to, it was one day too late when this McGregor news hit. So we're going to be current and talk about all things business related with Mayweather and McGregor going down August 26th, Saturday, 12 rounds. 154 pound uh, weight class. And our first question is, what kind of business do we think it'll do? Jason, start it off. Uh, you know, it's going to do really good business. I, I think that uh, there's just enough mainstream appeal, broad appeal, that uh, the gate is going to be incredible. Um, it's a T-Mobile, correct? Yeah, it's T-Mobile. So it, it'll definitely, uh, you know, smash the, whatever the Gates Nevada records would be. Uh, I think it'll do great on pay-per-view. I don't know how, I don't know uh, if it will exceed the Pacquiao Mayweather uh, pay-per-view uh, buy rate. I just, I, I'm, I think there will still be a, a group of people, a, uh, a group of people that will be hesitant to pay what will probably be a hundred, hundred twenty-five dollars for this fight. So there's that. But overall, I think it'll be a, a, a boon for uh, the state of Nevada. I mean, you're going to have a lot of people coming in from Ireland, Europe, uh, what, 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 whatever, to uh, to do it, uh, to uh, to uh, see the fight. Uh, John, what do you think? I think you're right. It's going to be a massive business. It's going to do massive business for us in the MMA media. They're going to love the traffic. The, we're going to milk it as much as possible. We're going to be 24-7 Mayweather McGregor uh, for the next six weeks, two months, I should say. So that's uh, so. for our point of view, it's great. Uh, I don't think – again, I agree with you, Jason. I don't think it's going to do as – I find it hard to believe it'll do as well as uh, Pacquiao Mayweather, uh, especially at the gate. People are talking about it's going to do better at the gate because all the Irish fans and, and it's MMA and UFC, I mean, MMA and boxing, UFC and boxing. But uh, people forget, generally, boxing does bigger gates than MMA does. And part, one of the reasons they have bigger, older guys that have tons of money, the whales that show up. And for Pacquiao, there were some specials. Pacquiao drew a lot of Asian whales. I mean, mm -hmm. These guys from Asia, just, you know, huge, you know, not just the people said the Philippines, but Chinese, Japanese. There were fan base. He had a big fan base in Asia that would fly in Macau. That uh, you know, these are multi multi millionaire billionaire type guys that would spend a ton, and you know, so that would that's what jacked up the price of those tickets. I don't think this will do well, but I predict it'll do. You know, I would estimate 35, 40 million at the gate. Pay per view, I, again, I find it hard to believe it'll beat Pacquiao uh, Mayweather just because that was such a just a colossal monstrous hit. Um, and and I know from people that were working on this fight for a while, this fight's been in the you know in the works for a while that the conservative estimate for the guys planning it was 3 million pay-per-view buys. So I think it'll do great, like over 3 million, which, you know, a lot of people might be disappointed for some reason if it only did that. But I think it's going to do over 3 million, so it's monster. We're talking hundreds of million of revenue generated for the guys involved. Yeah, my, my guess is, is to put a number out there, 3.5 to 3.7 million. That's what I'm guessing. Buys? Pay-per-view buys? Pay-per-view buys. Uh, because the last one just – felt like a almost like a cultural phenomenon and with the kind of letdown of Mayweather Pacquiao I don't know if people are going to get as hyped up for this especially since you know everybody who knows anything about these sports knows that McGregor should should be losing uh relatively badly probably but but on the other hand you've got you've got two sports coming together where maybe that will generate more buys perhaps and the only th other thing I has going for it is it's August it's late August the other one was in what was it in May and you had Spurs, Clippers, Game 7, you had NHL playoffs, you had all these things going on that maybe pulled away from it a little bit. Uh, late August, think about August, like you're, you're so sports starved, nothing is going on except for baseball. I think that's the day that college football actually starts. Uh, but so, I mean, I could see the gate going either way, but I think I'm with you guys. I think it's a little bit lower and I'm going 3.5 to 3.7. I'll tell you the one thing that they match for sure, 100%, I think they'll match Mayweather Pacquiao on, is the pay-per-view price. I think they go, again, for that $100 price, just under $100, $99.95 for the HD. That's my, that's my prediction. Yeah, I, I agree. I tend to agree. Yeah, it seems you don't, you don't, want, them, uh, you don't want them charging even more for, uh, for Mayweather McGregor than they did for Mayweather Pacquiao. That just, that just wouldn't seem to fit. So, John, uh, how do you think this whole thing got made? 
Well, uh, off the air, uh, Jason brought up a good point, and the, the big question that we should be asking is, how did it get made, considering, I guess, how did the commissions approve it, first of all? How did any commission approve this, considering, um, uh, first, I'm going to come out right away and say, I am not going to play the game that a lot of other MMA reporters are saying, where they try to pretend that Mayweather might have a chance, that they can't totally write him off, that uh, that in the grand scheme of things, of everything he's accomplished, that just maybe he'll pull this off too. No, he has no chance, people. He has absolutely no chance. I mean, yeah, sure, he has, he has the same chance Homer Simpson had to beat Dredrick Tatum. Uh, that's basically the chance he has, that he is a man who, while skilled in boxing compared to most people, he has never had a serious boxing match at a high level, and he's taking on the greatest boxer of his generation. Uh, in a ring, under boxing rules, with 10-ounce gloves, uh, I see no feasible way for him to win outside of Mayweather's heart skipping during the middle of the match uh, or maybe a, a fly, a bee stings Mayweather in the eye and has an allergic reaction, uh, <laughs> and the fight is canceled. But beyond that, he has no chance, and and that's the first thing I had to get. But anyways, but how do they get it made? That's uh, I guess that's the big question. Obviously, a lot of work. It's very surprising. Considering the UFC has would rejected in the past any sort of deal like this co promotion. Remember when Fader and Brock were talking a fight, and Fader uh, supposedly, reportedly, was willing to come over for a one fight deal. Uh, and the UFC at the time thought they could sell out Dallas Cowboys Stadium and would beat UFC 100 pay per view sales, but they refused that. That was they were not willing to give in on that. So uh, I guess the question is why? First, I'll ask you, Paul. Why do you think the UFC? Has agreed to loan out the the co promote, even though maybe they're not their name's not anything, to work with Mayweather on this fight. So wait, let me let me go back for a second. You don't you don't even give him a puncher's chance. What the hell's a puncher's chance? <laughs> he's he's been in the ring. He's been <laughs> in the ring with May with uh, with Pacquiao, with Madonna, with Mosley, with Oscar De La Hoya. With you know we uh, JMM well JMM's not a huge power puncher, much smaller. But Berto, he's been he's been in the ring with the best boxers in the world. Uh, the last you know I guess the last fifteen years he's been fighting. Uh, Winky Wright wasn't a great power, but great defense. I mean he's been in the ring against guys that were fighting the elite of the elite for the last fifteen years. And I'm supposed to expect a guy because what he has a karate stance that he's going to knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that has not been touched by anybody suddenly going oh, a karate stance took him out. Look at that. I, I just wanted to egg you on and see and see you go off a little bit. But the, what things you were saying is is what I call a John Jones toe chance, right? Yes. But we'd have to convert it to to boxing. <laughs> <laughs> the John Jones toe against Chael Sonnen, right? If the ref had seen it, uh, maybe maybe <laughs> yeah, some freak rolled ankle or who knows what. There was an ACL, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think Prince he has a slight puncher's chance. I give a slight puncher's chance, and then John Jones toe. That's where I go. But okay, what, what was the question again? <laughs> How was it? Yeah. Why do you think the UFC? Uh, well, I'll just say too. The only thing interesting about this fight to me, and the only reason anybody should be, is the pure ludicrousness of and the business side. And we're covering the business side. <laughs> if you want to get the breakdown of the fight, there's plenty of idiots out there going to touch that. We will leave that to them. We're going to break the business down. But. I was asking, why do you think the UFC agreed to this, considering their past history of being vehemently, ever since uh, they got on tough and yeah, after they worked with uh, Pride the one time, they've been vehemently against any sort of co-promotion or, or lending their name brand fighters to uh, other major uh, endeavors. Right. Well, as an economist, I think my, my the easiest answer could be the one that you could give for almost everything: money. Right. But uh, but. <laughs> Yeah, this lot first off, this doesn't seem to be a co-promotion, right? It, it feels like they're staying out of it. They might have some, they probably definitely have some contract behind the scenes as to how they get money for it. But yeah, it feels to me like McGregor is signed with Mayweather promotions for one fight and, and the UFC is completely out of it on the boxing end. Uh, that's what it feels like to me. But um, in terms of how it got made, I mean, are, are they motivated with the WEIMG thing uh, with the loans or the, or the, the, the earnouts or earnbacks? Why am I forget? Why am I slipping on the name of earnouts, earnouts. Yeah. That, that, that you had identified? But, um, but one reason I think it happened so fast, though, is that as opposed to Mayweather Pacquiao is, is McGregor, right, seems to you need to book this in a, in a tighter schedule. He's at, he's at kind of the height of his fame. 
uh, you can't sort of let this thing go for three years in the world of MMA. Uh, it, it seems like, you know, there's a, with all the fights that he wants to do, there's a decent chance he'll start losing more. Um, and will he still be very popular? Yes, but, but with uh, Floyd getting older and with sort of the need for speed here with McGregor where he's at, seem to be more a little bit of an impetus as to why it happened. I'll let you guys talk about uh, what you think on the WME side or, or whatever else you want to say. What do you think, Jason? You know, I think that, you know, Brian Campbell brought, tried to bring that up at the press conference and was uh, soundly uh, told he was asking a stupid question by Dana White, although it wasn't a stupid question because it definitely has to do with the new ownership, I think. I think uh, new ownership, uh, fresh, fresh ideas, and definitely it's a money thing. Uh, it's, it's all about the money. Why would you risk having your, one of your top stars do a crossover uh, event? It, it, it makes uh, no sense if you are thinking about your own sport uh, to go over into boxing, aside from the fact that it'll make tons and tons of money. So yeah, um, of course it was gonna it was gonna go get made. I was surprised, however, of how smoothly everyone says the negotiations went, simply because uh, you know these are guys who are very contentious uh, deal makers and such, and it seemed like it was it it took uh, less than uh, I mean it definitely was less than Pacquiao Mayweather, and it took less than a, a month or so uh, for for it all to get get handled. And uh, it, it, that uh, that was that was amazing to me. Obviously, there there are some guidelines here, uh, and with that, being, one thing it should be made clear here is that Floyd Mayweather is the overarching guy that's pulling the strings. He's making he, he's he, he's making the moves. Without him, there is no uh, there is no super fight here with Conor McGregor. I mean, if he didn't want to, if he didn't get the concessions he wanted, a show a show time. 10 ounce gloves, things like that. Um, it, it, I don't think it happens. Obviously, there um, he is not fighting at the MGM Grand. Uh, it's at a higher weight weight limit. So you know, those those are things that he appears to have conceded. Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, Paul. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, Paul. One thing you said: the UFC better be a promoter in this. Uh, otherwise, they're acting as the manager for McGregor. That'd be a violation of the Ali Act. So we, yeah. So we, we better. They, they're. My guess is they are the promoter on this, and but the promoter of record is uh, a, a Mayweather pr Promotions. So, 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 so what I was getting at, my my guess is that they could, they could, they don't have to be a promoter. They they could have just made a deal to release McGregor and allowed him to fight, and because of that deal gotten money and a percentage of whatever. I don't think they have to be a promoter in this. So I, I, they maybe well, they, they are. It's not that they can't be, but... But that does they, they can't be the no. case because they're actually said they're negotiating the deal. They're negotiating oh. the fight. So that would be... That's the part. You can't... They can't go in and say... They can they can negotiate a deal. That's why they negotiated first with Connor and signed him to a new deal with the UFC, I believe, because then they can go to Mayweather and say, okay, here's the deal. You give us whatever, and it's his slice, and you'll get that. They can't Go to for and say, well, listen, Connor's going to fight you. We're going to negotiate his contract and get a percentage of that. That would be a violation under Nevada law and under uh, the Ali. That's both. Right. That's, a, that's right. a violation. Well, there's, there's two two theories that I have there. So under the Ali, I just look. I had looked at it before we talked today, and a pro the definition of promoter is the primary promo promoter. So it would be the so Showtime is a primary promoter. So under if you're going to look at the finite language of the, of the Ali Act, uh, if the UFC, if you, if you, if the, if you, we claim that the UFC is a promoter, they wouldn't be the primary one. It would be Showtime. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from that, when negotiating with McGregor. Wait, can I correct uh, you, Jason? It'd be, oh, sure. it'd be Mayweather Promotions is the primary promoter. Mayweather, yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, Showtime's Mayweather the broadcaster. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Show, uh, yeah Mayweather I just want to correct you on that. I oh, like yeah, correcting yeah, no, you, so no, I just want to get that in there. No, I was going no, to. I just thought he was being brilliant in some way. I was on a roll. <laughs> You never know when the internet's going to crap out. But um, I, I also think that when they negotiate with McGregor, uh, he could ass uh, assign his rights for the UFC to negotiate on his behalf uh, and also include their language in which he could say that none of this has circumvents the Ali Act. Uh, and, and certainly, you know, here's the thing. Um, I, I, there's only two ways to sue under the Ali Act. Uh, two people, two entities can sue. Uh, that would be the state 
or a governmental ent ent entity or the fighter themselves un under a private right of action. So if McGregor agrees to the contract with the UFC, knowing how much money he's going to get, he's not going to be a guy who's going to sue unless there is something uh, down the line that's breached. And uh, I doubt the state of Nevada is going to sue here because because of the, all of the income coming into the state, so um, that's just one one theory. I, I I don't I don't I don't have any inside information on that, but I, there are ways to circumvent uh, the Ali Act in, in those types of ways. Yeah, well, I think yeah, I, I don't expect it to come into play. I'm just saying that would be a violation. And yeah. in fact, oh, in, no, in yeah. fact, the UFC might be in such a rush to get this done, they don't care because they don't expect Nevada to do anything about it, and they don't expect uh, McGregor, who wants the fight, to do anything about it. So they might say, "That's well, correct. no one's worried about it." Uh, I'm just pointing out it would be a violation. Exactly. And, and, but, and all and all I'm saying really quick is is I think that the UFC definitely covered their bases on whatever they did, worried about dipping into boxing and maybe being exposed to Ali Act down the line. I'm, I'm positive. I'm probably positive. They cover their bases. Well, I, I'll tell you, speaking how the fight got made, um, first of all, I should state, and I think we've been, we've been talking about this, not on air and stuff off the air, uh, about for the last two years or something about rumors about this. So this was this, when I wrote that article about how could Conor McGregor, uh, fight, uh, uh Mayweather without, um, without the UFC's permission. That wasn't coming out of left field. That was stuff I was hearing from people. And then Anton Thibodeau from a Bloody Elbow said, why don't you write that as an article? So I talked to a bunch of the people I talked to and and uh, only Sam Spears, the only one who went on the record, but we we brought that, you know, that's the that was stuff I'd kind of hear weird. Th what I'd heard is people were saying that he was planning to, you know, use the Ali Act to get out and fight Mayweather. And I said, that's impossible. And people said, no, it's not impossible. So I wrote that. So this has been going a while. And, uh, Part of my thinking is is that when Mayweather, not when, when McGregor filed that boxing license in California, uh, remember people made a big deal like it was following the blueprint, what I written out earlier. And I think that was intentional. Obviously, it was intentional. And the person that filed on behalf of Mayweather, both me and uh, Paul here can confirm, the person that filed that boxing license in California was Mike Mersch, former UFC, uh, uh, I can't remember his position in the UFC right now. What was his position? Attorney. He was, he was legal. He was, legal? Uh, Assistant General Counsel and something for business yeah. affairs. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, that's obviously when they did that, that was sending a message to the UFC that they're up to something. Uh, and so the question becomes, there's also stories floating around that, May, that McGregor was invited uh, to go to uh, D.C. Uh, to a lobby on behalf of the Ali Act, the, the Mullen uh, and stuff. So if you look at it that way, it's very strong possibility that Mayweather's, I mean, McGregor's camp had this leverage over the UFC and said, listen, here's the deal. We can fight you. I can start going to DC and making pain trouble for you, or we can take you to court. I can, you know, start following these steps to get through this fight, or you can agree to it, make a bunch of money because you guys need the money. And I think that's a strong possibility too, that that was the deciding kind of the deciding factor. Uh, because one thing I heard, and I don't know if it's true, but one thing I heard is the UFC didn't seem that enthusiastic at the presser. The people involved at the UFC didn't seem that enthusiastic about putting on this event. They're doing it, but they don't seem that enthusiastic for an event that's going to generate a lot of money. <laughs> so that's what made me think, well, maybe they're not 100% willing participants in this. But who knows? I don't have that good of insight. Well, sure. yeah, it, it did seem like Dana was not, it was deferring a lot, a lot uh, at the presser yesterday to Showtime and whatever they're going to do, which is in interesting because he used to have that big beef with Showtime way back when uh, when they took over Strike Force and they were, Strike Force was still on Showtime. But um, you know, I, I definitely think that there is a different tone going with the, the UFC. They're they're going to promote Connor, but they're not going. I mean, they're, they've made uh, they they're keeping that arm's length as far as oh no no uh, Mayweather Promotions and Showtime's are is the distributor of this pay per view. So I'm not sure if that if they made that explicitly clear in some sort of confidential agreement how that how that came about. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. And that's what that's what makes me think that they're not not involved. That they they have a piece of money coming by by allowing McGregor to go there, but they don't really want to be officially involved. That again, that's just my speculation. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm sure they they're getting a piece for sure. Um, but again, I got a question. I mean, if McGregor's going to make at least seventy five million, I mean that was what Dana White said, and possibly a hundred million. The the UFC's cut can't be, you know 
too big. It could be big still. Let's say it did. I mean, if it did Pacquiao numbers and you got Pacquiao split, that means the UFC. You know, McGregor got 100 million. The UFC to get about 50 million, which is a lot. But it's not. I mean, if you know, if you read the numbers what the UFC makes on the McGregor's big fights, it's not so much more. That's like what they make in one and a half, two fights, McGregor fights, anyways. So it doesn't seem so great that they'd risk their star for that. That kind of, I mean, unless there's, I thought for sure the UFC was going to finagle away that they're the broadcasters. So they get the HBO broadcasting cut, that they get to put it on Fight Pass, to get the, the digital fees for that, that they're going to find a way to get, to monetize this fight a lot more. But it doesn't seem like they're doing that either. And, and that's what's so interesting. That's what's so interesting. The deal that seems to have been brokered. Yeah, I could have I sworn that worst case scenario would be 50-50 split between McGregor and UFC. And it doesn't, it doesn't look like we have that. So that gets us into know. what, how it was structured, or good for UFC, we can go through all of this. But here, here's what I think, I might be jumping ahead a little bit. This is just my theory, that, um, that in order to do this, the speculation is, is will, will McGregor fight again? I swear, I think Conor McGregor is now like one of those, um, one of those actors who in, who's in the superhero franchise movies who has like a, a four or five fight contract and you can't get out of it. Uh, I mean, there are certain ways out of it, but you're not supposed to be able to get out of it. I feel like Conor McGregor has a new contract coming out of this and, and he's pretty much guaranteeing them three or four fights, like no retirement, no nothing. That, that's what I think is kind of the, the trade-off for this and, and to make sure that he stays in the game. I don't know, it might be crazy, but... I think, I think he's locked into some sort of deal where the UFC knows they're going to have him after his mainstream exposure for at least a few more times. I don't know, do, you guys, do you guys think it's ludicrous? I, I mean, Mara, I, I talked about that before where I thought that the UFC would put in their contract that he would only get the rest of his money from this fight by finishing out his UFC fight, that they would partial that, payments from this. That, that would work too. That, I, I did, but now I don't know anymore. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, if I was McGregor's counsel, I would not agree to that at all. I mean, what, what happens if he gets injured? I mean, well, you, and then he doesn't get those payments. I you, mean, that, that you seems... can't get rid of you can't get rid of injuries, but but you could say no retirement, or if you retire, you could do a reverse. If you retire at certain times, you owe us a certain amount of money back. But you mm. don't think they're protecting themselves in some way? I did before, but not. I think now, I, I the way this went down and. The way it sounds, I don't. It's I, again. That's why I go back to uh, maybe they caved in more to that. I thought that was BS pressure that he was putting on when he was doing that filing for the California license because, you know, he wasn't going. I thought he's not going through with this. It doesn't seem like he's taking it far enough to actually make it a serious threat. But now you look at what happened. It's like, well, maybe there was something more to it than we thought. That they were, you know, that they felt compelled that they had to. I, I would think they would have put it in that they, they would that he'd make him return. Uh, I don't think, I mean, people are like, well, he'll come back because UFC will start paying him tens of millions, but that breaks the oh. UFC business model because they want to make 300, we already know from their prediction, they want to make 300 million a year in profits. They're not going to do that by paying him more. So well, he, here's the deal. If you're making 10 million a year and someone offered you a hundred million dollars and the trade-off was you had to lock yourself in and guarantee not to retire for three more fights, let's just, let's just put three that's, out that's there. A, that's illegal to do to guarantee someone to... Is it to, to, to say no retirement? No, to say, yeah, yeah it's guaranteed the, the force that's forcing people to fight. That's that's breaking the uh, the 14th Amendment, you know. <laughs> that literally is, is that's the 14th like Amendment. Flight. It is. Uh, oh, there's there's injuries there's there. there's no there's you cannot <laughs> force you to cannot compel someone to, 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 to work. That's the that's the whole that's the whole argument in, in sports franchise, you know. The okay. Sports context, okay, you know? okay, okay, okay. To take whatever those <laughs> deals are, <laughs> well, we to Kirk take Black. whatever those deals are that that. That the actors sign, <laughs> the whatever four fight. Well, yeah, but that's the, the, the they have a set number of fee they're going to get paid for fight. So that's why I was yes, thinking yes. that the UFC <laughs> was going to take his money and say you don't get, we're not, you're only going to get twenty five million for this fight, but the the remaining seventy five million you make, it's going to be partialed out over your next three fights. So we're going to give you a twenty five million dollar bump on each of your next three fights. But the way they make it sound, it's like he's going to right. walk away with a hundred million. If he walks with a hundred million, then then they're not. There's nothing else they can give him later. They can't you know, reserve that money later. So uh, I think you're crazy. Let's put it that I don't know how to finish that sentence but in a polite way. But uh... I disagree. You could lock it in. You could say if you don't complete these fights, you owe us this much money back. There is a way. 
We have a lawyer a right there. If that happens. That would be a lawsuit if that happens. <laughs> to be way. honest with you, but I think that you know, uh, I, you guys are making making sense, believe it or not, because I think uh, I think my initial thought was if he gets a hundred million, I'd be out of the game, like he had he had said on his in Instagram post or whatever. I mean, there's no reason to go back for two million dollars a fight. I mean, that that well, he, he I mean, does make he makes a lot. Of, he, uh, oh yeah, no, no, but, no, no yeah. I, Best estimates are probably in the. I mean, you know, people say 20, probably the stuff I've heard coming from pretty good sources, eight to 10 million a fight right now. I mean, but yeah, a hundred million to back down to 10, mm. you know, it's, it, it doesn't seem like a, a fair exchange. Now, uh, definitely uh, the, the UFC could have put something in, in writing saying that he comes back for two, maybe three fights or uh, by the end of 2019. To, get, to ensure this this other payment coming in because I you know again with the fights thing what if somebody what if his opponent gets injured blah 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 you know and that money's just sitting in the bank you gotta you, I mean you have to put a timeline on this thing so they so they uh, ensure the payments at some point down the road if See? That's the way I just going. needed my lawyer to speak for me yes <laughs> well, that makes but, I mean, I'm just, saying, I'm just saying that these are, I mean, I'm not, I didn't say that those are guaranteed, <laughs> that's guaranteed payments. I'm just saying that they could, they could incentivize him to come back by adding additional money by a certain point in time. I'm not, I, I don't, and I don't think it's going to be, I, if I was the lawyer there, I mean, and there are smarter lawyers than I out here. That's an understatement. But that is um, not true. There's no smarter <laughs> lawyer around. We haven't been, we haven't been tested on that. Um, but, uh, definitely, you would put some timeline saying by the end of 2018, he receives he's payment in full of whatever incentives that he he uh, he achieved, um, or three fights, you know, something one or the other. I mean, because the uncertainty of the nature. I mean, like, I mean, imagine if the fight he had to be, fight Khabib or something like that, and the guy comes, uh, he's ready, he goes down, he goes, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, you have to make sure that there's some timeline there for him to receive payment. So that's that's yes. all I'm saying. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's okay. Here's a question. Since we brought all this stuff up, we know what the Pacquiao Mayweather split was like. How do you think? Uh, how do you think? What do you think the split is between Mayweather and and uh, the UFC? The May Mayweather promotes the UFC. And what do you think the split is between the UFC and McGregor? Paul, we'll start with you since you have that look of <laughs> like you don't know what to say. Now, so. now, I honestly, I mean, I thought it would be a, I thought it would be a, a Pacquiao deal, sixty forty. And then, and then the UFC and McGregor would negotiate over the 40. That's what I thought. And come up to somewhere around 2020. That's what I originally thought. Now it feels to me that it's more like, it's more like two thirds, one third, some, somewhere around there, or at least on the minimum guarantee. And then maybe they change it with the extra percentages. And, and it feels like the UFC is, is getting maybe, I don't know, half of what McGregor gets or something like that. Uh, that's my best guess, but that's what it seems. But but so, they're going to benefit off of the mainstreamification of 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 this of the two and a half months of mainstream publici publicity. So when you say two thirds, one thirds, how does that equate? Is that seventy five twenty five? I'm bad with numbers. Oh, 60, yeah. 66 <laughs> Which one is the alligator going at? Sixty six and two thirds to thirty three. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely think whatever. Um, Mayweather Pacquiao was, I think that they, uh, Mayweather side improved on that. So that would be 65, 35, whatever that is with the, with the 35 going to that, that add to a hundred. <laughs> you're like, you're like so close to two thirds, one third. You just can't go there. You know, actually I think the reverse though. I think, I think that, I think there's a chance the UFC got a better deal than Pacquiao simply really? because yeah. One thing is Mayweather wants this. Not that he wants to fight so bad, but he, like he sees his, he has a limited window of opportunity. This is an easy fight. This is the only fight where he's going to make over a hundred million. So he wants it, and he knows it's a cakewalk. Uh, there's no risk involved. On the side of McGregor's side, is that where Pacquiao had just got a loss from JMM and uh, Marquez, and 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 was basically his his value was starting to go down. This was his. This was really his last big fight. He could he could take. And, and get himself back on oh, back on track. The UFC, they can kind of hold. I, I'm just that's just me thinking. Who knows? It might be the reverse. They might have caved in and and may, you know Mayweather's going to walk away with 79 percent of everything and you know <laughs> and, and and little may, McGregor's going to know that he's paying the hotel bill at the end. He has no clue. We we don't know. But uh, I, I just think they did slightly. I'm thinking they did better in the a little over 40 percent, maybe 45 up to 45. Mayweather got the Mayweather's so arrogant about this. He got the majority. 
Oh yeah, no. Again, yeah, he's the overarching figure in in this whole thing. So he he improves. Um, I am surprised that uh, they did get the T-Mobile thing uh, versus MGM Grand because that's where uh, Mayweather. That's like his home, yeah. whatever. But I guess the UFC. Maybe I mean maybe that was an easy concession because that's the UFC's home. Um, maybe he get, uh, Mayweather gets partial of the uh, of the gate as well or merchandise something like that. I mean the only thing that uh, maybe that uh, the UFC and Mc McGregor uh, also could exploit maybe is the international rights there. I, I don't know. Uh, that seems to be something that uh, in prior negotiations Mayweather has been fine with. He, he's okay with domestic. <laughs> so here's another question for you, Jason. Do you think this is good? Was this going to be good for the UFC? Is this going to be good for MMA? You know, um, I think, here's what I think. I think the press conferences and the, the lead up to this will be beneficial for the UFC and the UFC brand because it'll bring out a character and, a main, and bring out more mainstream exposure than it is getting right now. Uh, so I think from that perspective, uh, you know, and then you'll get his whole story about, you know, he was on welfare four years ago and now he's, look at him now, he's a self-made man, uh, look at his cute baby, things of that nature. And, and, and then, uh, I think from that perspective, you'll get, uh, some good publicity for the UFC. People might be turning into UFC. I think that the UFC will barrage, uh, uh do a lot more, uh, to uh, get that in there. The embedded episodes will be crazy. The shoulder programming around it will be crazy. Now, on fight night, August 26th, how will that look if, if uh, Mayweather just clowns them for 10 rounds or there's nothing happening? Yeah, that, that, could be, that, could, that could be bad for the brand. Obviously, Dana White was very adamant in saying that this is actually, everything is good for the brand. Even if he loses, it's good for the brand. Um, to a certain point, I can agree with that, but I just, you know, in the end, it just, it depends on how he, he fares. If he lasts and he puts the, if, if he gets a couple punches in, then he, you know, he'll look like a hero. But um, if, if it's total, uh, if it's a snooze fest and, and Mayweather dominates, you know, I don't know what it, what it says for the casual viewer, you know, basically that, you know, they were duped again. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't I can't be sure, but uh, it feels like yes because um, I mean uh, Mayweather Mayweather McGregor led PTI together. It led PTI, and it, it MMA no matter how popular it is is always like in their last segment of the day, and all of a sudden it's leading it. And we have two and a half months of this. Not going to be leading it every day, of course, but but two and a half months of of the most mainstreamification that they've ever seen is, is, is coming, and so. Like Jason says, as long as he doesn't get knocked out in the first punch, which is virtually impossible to happen in a Floyd Mayweather fight, um, it, what's more likely is right, – that's the question, though, not who's going to win. Is, is he going to get knocked out in what round, right, or is he going to make it to the end? But um, as, as, long as, he, as long as he doesn't absolutely, utterly embarrass himself, all the hardcore boxing MMA fans, they know, they know what's supposed to happen. The casual fans might laugh at it when he, when he looks silly, probably. And they might laugh at, it, but they're still being exposed to to UFC and MMA for two and a half months, and they're going to be curious. And, and it, it just it feels like on net it's probably got to be good for the sport. John? I, I mean, I think it'll. It, it, there's, I mean, uh, you know, Cart, our buddy Cardiff Garcia from Financial Times, who's I don't know if he watches the show, but he reads their stuff. He brought up a good he uh, a name drop in there, people. Uh, uh, <laughs> but he brought up to me the interesting point about not interesting, but his fear. If you're, he thinks it could be a positive, but he's also afraid that there's so many risks involved. Because what if Connor goes out there and he looks like Ronda Rousey versus Amanda Nunes? He gets beaten that maybe he doesn't get knocked out in the first round, but for three rounds he's just he's just clown and pummeled. Well, and first of all, are the fans gonna be upset? All these casuals that know nothing about it, are they gonna be upset that they felt like they got gypped, that they got ripped off, that uh, scammed on this? And if that's the case, who do they blame? There's a the risk is both. It's not just MMA. The risk could be boxing too. Like oh, another shitty boxing match. This is what boxing's like. That's why I, that they might say oh, this is what happens when you do boxing because the rules are so limited. And an MMA cage, anything goes. We would have seen a much better fight. So it might help UFC that that way. But the other way might people might say oh, MMA fighters are a joke. They're they're not talented. They're they're goons. And look at the real art is boxing. And the next thing you know, you know, Canelo, GG, Triple G, just made a, an extra four hundred thousand pay per view buys. 
I doubt that too, but there's a possibility. <laughs> there's, there's a wide range. There is a lot of risk, I think, involved in this, letting this fight go forward. Uh, the risk is probably offset by the great amount of money they expect to make, but still, there is. I think there's a risk. Yeah, yeah, the, the McGregor. Yeah, I mean, I agree. But I mean, the, the other, the other big risk is: does McGregor fight again after this? After he make you thought, yeah, the whole theory why they're going to force him to fight, but <laughs> we already know he's locked into at least three fights. <laughs> Book it. <laughs> it's a hundred million. Let's say he makes a hundred million on this. Here's my. I'm gonna throw. This is what's gonna happen. This is not. I have. There's no. This is me just speaking out of my ass and making stuff up as I go along here. But uh, so no one take this for for verbatim. But at the end of it, he's gonna rip up his UFC contract and declare himself a boxer <laughs> if he does a decent job. <laughs> and, and then basically repeat the whole thing again, where he's gonna threaten the UFC. Uh, you know, basically let let it known that if he doesn't get another boxing match, that you know that he'll book it himself and you know through the Ali Act try to get out of it, and they'll book it. You know, in other words, he'll force to be making if he does anywhere remotely uh, passable, he'll try to book another boxing match and make tens of millions. Against who, though? I don't know. Who knows? Who's the next guy down the list that wants to box him? Wait, did you condition that on him not embarrassing himself? Is that yeah, I said as long as he has a somewhat presentable okay. showing. All right. Like he, let's say he goes five or six rounds. Uh, he loses. He gets hit. And they, maybe they call the they, on the he, you know quits on the bench in between sixth and seventh round because he gets beat up badly. But people, the general masses, don't view it as him getting completely demolished because just the way Mayweather fights, it's you know. Uh, so defensive that he doesn't get, but let, something like that. Then, I, then, I, then he comes back and says, "I'm going to box again. I'm not going back to the UFC for what you're going to pay me. We're going to box again, and we'll pick someone else." That I mean, he could box in Ireland at that point. They could set something up there. I'm sure he could sell out a, a Coke. Park. Oh yeah, yeah. They could put him against someone in Ireland, some uh, UK boxer that's a big enough draw that's maybe doesn't make as much as Groves. You know, he would. He would be living in the courtroom after that. Getting his ass sued like crazy. Again, you know? <laughs> again, but again, he's going to give the UFC the option. They can go along with it or yeah. so that's the, that's, I'm just throwing that out. But again, people, that's just me. I'm, I'm fantasy booking for, <laughs> you know, as the pro wrestling fans say. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make sure we have more to talk about after the fight. <laughs> <laughs> so Jason, you think he's going to fight again or not, Jay? We we didn't get you. Uh, yeah, uh, I I really think uh, he probably will fight again. What what is he? Twenty seven, twenty eight. I think I think that I think it's going to happen. I I I I I, I just uh, think that there, there's nothing left for. I mean, you know, there's after the boxing, he'll probably want to come back for one more one more time to defend the title. Maybe he wants to go up to 170 to, to challenge for, for that title. Maybe GSP is uh, in the offing, something, some big, big fight thing like that. But, um, you know, I, I, I just, if I were him, I would take the $100 million and go. But, again, you're 28. What else are you going to do with your life? Yeah. Well, well, I'll say the one thing he, he – I think this is a strong possibility too. If he does come back to MMA, he's not going to get what he made in the, this type of number. But if he does come back, because he's sitting on you know now tens of millions of dollars, it's very feasible for him to say, "I am only going to come back if you do pay me that twenty million that I really wanted before. You 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 know double triple my pay that I was getting before, and I will come back. If you don't, I got plenty of money to retire on. And I consider you know, and and at that point, William Morris like, well, that breaks our business model. We want to make huge profits to make sure." We make the huge profits, but at the same time, like we really need him to even come close to hitting those numbers. So, so let, let, uh, there's uh, two questions I have for you guys. But one is, do you think that the, the UFC just took an audible commitment with him, or do you think there's something in writing about him coming back? Uh, it's got to be something in writing. God. All right. Uh, no, it could be just verbal. I mean, it could just be oh, his words. I, I think he has. A, I think there's no commitment to come back. I think he has a contract. Uh, he's got his original contract, and he has this new contract. Uh, and and maybe it says something like his next bout has to be an MMA bout or something after this. Who knows? But he does not have. There's nothing that's going to guarantee him's coming back because there's just you can't do that. You can't guarantee uh, someone. You can't force anybody to fight. Yeah, you. So. Could, I mean, you could retire with you know a couple fights still left on your contract. That's you know that's mm -hmm. just the, right. the whole thing. Yeah. All right, and, and when he comes back, uh, let's assume he comes back, 
Do you think he's going to be defending his lightweight belt, or do you think he's just going to be like super fight, money fight hunter? It, just, I, just going for the biggest fight he can find every single time, no matter what. I, part of it, I think, depends on who they want him to fight. If it's, you know, I think he's good at picking. Uh, he's not ducking anybody, but I think he will be picking an opponent that uh, that will give him the most money. If there's a if there's a lightweight that pops up and he says, "Oh, we got to see this fight," then yeah, I think he would take a lightweight. But if if GSP drops down to lightweight and wins the title, you know, wins the interim belt or whatever, he's going to go to lightweight. He's going to choose GSP over Woodley in a second. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. If if, uh, if I don't know who else, if if Robbie Lawler wins back the welterweight belt at some point. I think he, you know, he'll choose well, you know, uh, partly because he partly he'll look at it and say that's a, you know, that's a better matchup for me. It's just, just stylistically. Um, if GSP wins the middleweight belt, he's going to middleweight. Right. It, yeah. feel, it feels, oh, so go ahead. Sorry, Jason. Oh, no, no. I was, I was just going to say, I think he, he wants to do something, uh, you know, that no one's done before. So, you know, going to 170. So to say that he is the three time, you know, a champ in three, three different uh, uh, weight divisions, you know, uh, even though he's been stripped of the featherweight title. But I mean, you, you know what, you get what I'm saying. He, he wants to do something like that. So yeah, uh, Woodley or GSP would be on the plate at, at 170. Uh, you know, out there is the Nate Diaz at 155. I'm not sure if uh, he'd want to do that unless he was given big money. But on the other end of that is Nate Diaz, who wants big money as well. So I'm not sure if they're going to do something, uh, some blockbuster fight like that. Uh, if if they do, they're going to expend a lot of money for that. But uh, those are the two th two things that I see him doing. He's never going back down down to 145. So, and I I just I just don't think he cares about whether or not he defends. Uh, the 155, unless it makes sense for him money-wise. Right. It, it feels to me like we'll see him a few more fights. GSP would be one of them. Diaz would be another one. And and Ferguson and Nurga and Khabib aren't his type of fights. There may be yeah. one other person, one other big name, and then and maybe he's gone. Uh, it feels like it would just be hunting big fights. Yeah, you, you definitely. I mean, that's the only two fights I really mm -hmm. see that make sense to him. Uh, possibly the welterweight belt, whoever has the belt at the time, and then GSP and and Nate Diaz are the uh, the three the three titles, the three fights that. Uh, oh, maybe again, we shouldn't uh, Duffy. We shouldn't underestimate that if they could set up some fight in Ireland. I think that's a right. you know, that, that would be the that would be the uh, wild card. The wild card, yeah. That out of nowhere, that might come out. Oh, that makes sense because we're going to sell eighty thousand yeah. tickets in Ireland. Yeah, he's the local hero. Nick, so. Nick could be cool too. I don't know if he if he might be fight Nick. I don't know if that would be. It would seem like it'd be big, but that would still be bad. It'd still do good. But <laughs> I, I, the big question is, but Connor might. You know, as much as he's bravado and he talks a lot, I do think there's a point where he understands he can't mm -hmm. go up that much. There's guys that are so much bigger than him that just it's not right. worth fighting. He's not. His fans might think he can beat anybody up, but I think he's smart enough to know that there's. Yeah, I, I mean, I would think somebody like Robbie Lawler might be a too big of a guy to. Rob, uh, yeah, Robbie's not super big at welterweight, and I think it's—I just think stylistically, Robbie yeah. matches up. He just he, I, th I imagine him looking at Robbie and saying, "Okay, I have a much better shot than a guy is a good as wrestler and as big and strong." I mean, Woodley's not that much bigger height-wise, but just thickness-wise, mm -hmm. strength. You know, you okay. can see that, and he's a grappler, so now you got that problem. Um, and uh, Stephen Wonderboy, I think, would be a length problem. It'd be, it'd be oh, yeah. great to fight a striker, but you're like, "Holy crap! My the reach in this guy and the length of him is just gonna." just negates my striking advantage over everybody else. So I don't see those matchups being smart. I, he, again, though, the big thing, too, I think if he makes a lot of money from this fight, he only comes back, he can, he has the leverage now to, to literally hold. He can do what all the fighters talked about in the past where they're going to hold out. He could hold out and say, you've got to start paying me a lot more money, a big chunk of what you make compared to what you normally pay fighters uh, uh, for me to come back, and that's also in the UFC might cave because they might think, God, that's the only way we're even come close to making our, our you know, our, our profit uh, projections that we want to make. So, see, and the only difference is I think that in order to release them to do this fight, the UFC already negotiated that future. That they part of they're saying we'll let you do this, but this is the deal going forward. Oh no, I'm, I'm sure they did. That doesn't yeah. matter though. That doesn't holding. That doesn't stop people from holding out. Well. With things to cover that that I don't know of because I'm not a lawyer. You're not. Yeah, well, you're willing to break the Fourteenth Amendment, so it's, 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 so that that makes it a lot easier when you're willing to do that. It, so. it, it could be forced, forced or incentivized, my friend. Forced or incentivized. <laughs> so, so we, I, well, we talked pretty much. We covered all the ground. I think we wanted to cover. Except you wanted to bring up. You had a. Uh, Subject about the judges, you had a point to make. Oh yeah, yeah. Just a quick no, just a just a quick throwing it out there. I'm wondering, wondering about um, 
how the judges are going to go for these things. Like you need, you need, you need a, a legit boxing referee, but um, and you need boxing judges. But I'm wondering if um, you know Adelaide Bird and Glenn Trowbridge are are big boxing and MMA judges in in Nevada, and they do both. And and it, I was it's got it's got me wondering if uh, if they would insist on uh, on boxing only judges or if boxing judges who have exposure to MMA would would be uh, included or, or sort of forced out of this. I don't know. Uh, do you guys how have any theories them? on that? Huh? Uh, is, is there a methodology for how they pick them? Or is it just random draw? What's the... Uh... In, in MMA, it's the commissions. I'm not 100% sure if boxing is different. I, 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 I feel like I've heard something about the promoters having it, not just more than having a say, but I could be wrong. I'm, I'm not 100% sure um, uh, in, bo in, in boxing. But yeah. but uh, in MMA, it's the commission, uh, who, the executive director for title fights uh, gives the recommendations, and then the commission picks them. I mean, I, if the, if it's the promoter's case, I, it's whoever Mayweather wants as his uh, <laughs> as his judges. So I, I mean, that's what I would think. I was just wondering if they would raise a stink if like Adelaide Bird was in there because she has maybe an MMA bias or something like that, even though she's a le I, you know legit boxing judge. I hope they go with the yeah. worst, most corrupt, blind judges possible that they find who are the just get the, that's my hope. And I, I, you know, just hit me actually. When I said the Fourteenth Amendment earlier, I meant the Thirteenth Amendment. Fourteenth is about See? citizenship. You don't even know your amendments. I don't. I spaced out wait, on that. Fourteenth hey, Amendment. This guy's a lawyer and he didn't know. No, wait. The Fourteenth Amendment has to deal with slavery, doesn't it? No, that's the Thirteenth Amendment. Fourteenth is citizenship. It granted citizenship to those born in the U.S. Is that right? I'm pretty damn sure. There's no amendment. Oh, you're in right. In a you are correct. You I'm are correct. Yes. You, you know, I was really counting on you, Jason, as the lawyer here, the the legal expert, to uh, well, correct no. me earlier. <laughs> You go. Yeah, thirteenth is a slavery. Well, uh, it sounded like uh, I was waiting for the uh, people to comment on our post. Someone's gonna post. just make fun of me now that I don't know what I'm talking about. With the, but I meant the thirteenth. The thirteenth was used was the one always cited, and, and it gets all the fans upset when um, when uh, when agents and and guys and sports age, uh, sports labor guys bring up the slavery. And they're referring to the Thirteenth Amendment as a long tradition. But as soon as they bring that up, fans, you know, fans and sports will freak out. How dare you compare yourself to a slave? And you know, you're always like, well, they're not really comparing themselves to a real slave. They're comparing themselves to the legal history. There's a there's a there's a legal tradition of using that that uh, that term. But I would know about that. Jason would, but he didn't. He forgot. <laughs> it's late here. Sorry. Yeah, and it's there's a storm going on in Seattle apparently. So there is. It's raining. Yeah. All right. All right. So so final final prediction. Uh, does it go to decision or does Mayweather win by knockout? Uh, what prior That's to a, the decision? This is a business show. The final the the final prediction should be how much do you think it'll make? <laughs> well, we already did that. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll go first on this because I really don't care about how the fight does because it's unimportant. I, I think a better rule would be if they the rule was the the rules of the match should be that they just dump money in the ring, and and, and that way it might be more interesting because Mayweather won't be able to move as well. Maybe McGregor can hit him, and they both might be distracted so much by stuffing money in their pants that they would one of them would get an <laughs> opening, so there might be a quicker knockout. So that would be my rule change, but. Uh, I think this fight is it's going to be an eye opener for I mean Mayweather's not going to blitz him uh like you know like you'd see an MMA where a guy would blitz a boxer just take him down and beat him up that's not going to happen but it's going to be a beating for four or five rounds before someone throws in the towel or they they call the fight because he's not going to he's going to he's going to hit Mayweather about 10% of the time they're all going to be deflected off the glove or off the arm he's not going to get a clean shot and Mayweather's going to be probably hitting at about a 50% clip, and there are going to be some hard counters coming in there that uh, McGregor's just not going to see coming. He's just, it's just a different, he's, you know, he's like a, he's like a baseball player. Uh, no, I should say he's like a cricket batsman uh, walking into the Major League Baseball to take on uh, Clayton Kershaw, in a, you know, at the mound. It's not, uh, I don't care how good you were in your sport. It's, you're not going to do well. <laughs> Jason, what do you got? You know, um, I for some reason I envision the the lead up to be sort of like the Ricky Hatton, uh, Floyd Mayweather lead up, where the Irish fans are just singing uh, Mayweather's name that like that, and I also envision it ending 
like uh, Ricky Hatton uh, with Floyd May Mayweather. Maybe not uh, him being ran, ran into the turnbuckle, but um, basically I think this is <laughs> going to be stopped in uh, four, three or four rounds. So he'll last longer than Hatton, but uh, three or four rounds, uh, Conor McGregor will will receive a beating. Uh, it'll look, there'll be flashes in the first round like it, it, like it does all the time. But uh, again, y you have to sit back and think this is, I mean, no matter how much you hate the guy personally, he is the best boxer of the modern era. And there's no way that his first loss is going to happen to a guy that uh, that's uh, boxing record is zero and zero. Wow. Just can't wow. We all have a KO. So Mayweather, Mayweather hasn't knocked anybody out since I can't remember barring the Victor Ortiz hug knockout. Ricky um, Hatton. Ricky Hatton oh, was the last one. Oh, was uh, Ricky Hatton? Oh, that was off the turnbuckle where he hit him, and then yeah. like he fell into the turnbuckle. And he, yeah. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I think, I think McGregor will, uh, will fade, uh, and cardio will get to him. I think he's probably prepping that a lot, but it'll get to him. I'm gonna give him until the eighth or ninth round oh. when, when he finally gets knocked out. Yeah. Because I have I have that little faith in uh, Mayweather's punching power, but it will it will eventually get there. I don't I don't I'm not worried about Mayweather. I don't think Mayweather's punching power is gonna be the problem. It's his accuracy. Volume, yeah, and, yeah. It's just, it's just he's just and even as yeah, not as sure. he's not gonna throw a lot, but he's gonna hit so many times yeah. clean that it doesn't you know, when when you're walking into even if he's not throwing the hardest, you're walking into a punch 10, 20 times around, that takes a toll. His face is gonna be so I mean, look at the um uh Gotti fight, uh uh mm -hmm. With, I mean, that might be a repeat of this fight. I mean, look at the face that he had. By the second round, it was swollen and red. He couldn't see anything. And um, I, uh, that's what I kind of expect this fight to look like, where he is just um, – McGregor just cannot comprehend where, how the punches are fitting through the, the guard on the gloves. <laughs> he's just not used to them. Where, you know, Mayweather's blocking everything because he's, you know, Mayweather spent a life just worried about the waist up. And throwing punches that's all he's done for you know for almost his whole adult life for almost his whole life and this is you know mcgregor spent a fraction of the time working on that part of the game or we will have a new term uh to coin floyd mayweather's ankle something like yeah. that well i mean it, come on this i mean <laughs> if it, if you went it's a black swan event if uh if mcgregor went if you're familiar <laughs> with the black swan the world has changed and, and if he wins if McGregor wins. I I'll be the first to go out and buy the secret, the book. <laughs> Floyd Mayweather. Off. Floyd Mayweather's second round turn ankle so bad that the bone pops out. The ref stops the fight. Boom. McGregor wins. <laughs> I'm just uh, waiting for wait, McGregor's you got another, a rematch. You got a rematch. <laughs> I'm waiting for McGregor's karate stance to confuse Floyd so bad <laughs> that he gets the punch there and knocks him out. That seems to be every. If that happens though, then I'm I'm like okay, that the world makes no more sense. Uh, the secret does work. Conor McGregor does have the <laughs> ability to project his will, force of will upon the world and transform it like the shaper of the worlds from Marvel Comics. He can, the cosmic cube, he can twist reality to fit his needs. Uh, in that case, you know, uh, I, I've given up on understanding anything. I, I believe we're in the Matrix living in Conor's world if that happens. So, but uh, I, but you know what, people, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Any final words? Uh, we get no cut of this fight, and that's the saddest part. <laughs> that is the saddest part. We should. Part. <laughs> but it'll be fun. I guess, I guess final words, share and like this video. We need to get it, uh, you know, uh, the 50 people that like it, make sure you get 50 others, and we'll have a 100-man <laughs> fan base. There we go. Well, uh, I, think, I think our next one will be a, a year in review a sort of WME year in review sometime in early July. We'll try to get that up there. And uh, on behalf of Jason Cruz and John Nash, I'm Paul Gift. Keep doing business as usual.